Today's the day. I'm going to teach you how to make mesh mixed animals. So today we're going to combine the head of a rhino and the body of a pug. Uh, so this is not only an exercise for fun. Through this exercise, we're going to learn about a lot of the tools that are useful for other applications in Mesh Mixer, and I'll speak about those during the process. But I figured, what a better way to learn about Mesh Mixer than to Mesh Mix. Let us begin. So the first thing we're going to do is import uh, one of our animals. So I've located that on my desktop uh, in the Pug Rhino folder. Let's first import the Pug. Here he is quite a beaut. Um, you'll notice that he is only about 50,000 triangles, not that big. And then we can turn on wireframe, you can see the detail. It's pretty beautiful. Uh, we're going to remove his head, but not before importing the other animal, because we want to, we sort of want to see how we're going to combine them, right? We want to see what areas are going to be um, cut from each one. Okay, so great. So let's Import. Now you'll notice that these options are here. Uh, don't change them. Well, if you do, that's on your own risk. I found that they're they are totally fine. So uh, I'm going to say append, and then I'm now I'm going to import the rhino. I think the rhino is significantly bigger. No, he isn't. Fantastic. Okay. So now what just popped up is known as the object browser. This is crucial. Whenever you're dealing with multiple objects in Mesh Mixer, the way that you navigate between them effectively is with the object browser. You notice that I can click on the pug and the pug becomes highlighted and I click on the rhino and the rhino becomes highlighted. Now I could have just done that with the just by clicking on the respective files. Um, that can be challenging when you have more files. Um, it can also be challenging uh, if you are trying to combine them, right? So let's say I wanted to make this, I wanted to combine the rhino and the pug as such. You know what, I'll actually talk about this in a little bit. Okay, so. Let's, let's hide the pug, so you'll notice there's a little eyeball next to him. I'm going to click it, and now he's gone red. That's because I've still selected him, but I've made him invisible. Now if I click away, you'll see that he disappears. But if I want to bring him back, no problem. I just click back this eyeball. But in this case, we don't want him. Okay, so I want the rhino. Um, I actually want to sort of align them, so you'll notice that there's this little uh, alignment cube. I don't know what it's called. But we can, uh, sorry. We can use that in order to align our, our scan. Sorry, not a scan, our files. Now I'm going to use T for transform. That's going to allow us to move one file with respect to the other. And you can sort of, you can type in the exact distance that you want it to move. You can rotate it. This is in radians, I believe. You can scale them. You can have them uniformly scale. You can scale, this is sort of its size and the various axes. Um, in this case, I'm just sort of free balling it because I don't need to do anything very precise for this operation. Okay, so I guess I want the rhino head to be a little bit larger. So I'm going to scale up the rhino. So how can I do that? Well, I could type it in here, which is sort of cumbersome, or I could look and zoom right in on that. Oh, it doesn't actually make the thing bigger. I, I'll observe that the, the center of this coordinate system of these axes is a little white box. And if I click on the box and I drag outwards, you'll notice that things get bigger or smaller. So I want to make the, the rhino a little bit bigger. Great. Okay. Now I'm going to view it from the top. I want to make sure everything's sort of hunky-dory and aligned. Great. You know what? I'm actually going to make them even bigger. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, great. So I'm going to say accept. Now I'm going to hide the pug. Now basically I'm going to cut off a section of the rhino. So there's a couple ways we can do that. Um, first things first, I want to select the face of the rhino. So you'll notice I can select the face, and then if I hold down control, and then I zoom, I'm using my, my scroll wheel, I don't know if you can hear it. Um, and as I uh, expand, or as I keep scrolling, it'll just keep expanding. And if I stop scrolling, it'll stop expanding. If I scroll backwards, it'll expand in the opposite direction from whence it came. Um, and this is sort of a quick and dirty way of sort of getting the selection where you want it. So you can sort of augment that by, so you're already in the selection tool, now I'm just sort of rotating around and clicking the areas, sort of making it a nicer interface. And then I'm going to use the B tool to create a boundary. You'll notice, sort of like that. I want to smooth it out. I don't want to preserve the shape. I don't really care about the shape. Number of iterations. And I actually don't know what most of these do. I just sort of 
tweak them until it looks right. And that's sort of the, the way to go with Mesh Mixer. Um, just tweak it so it looks right. Great. Okay, so now I have this nice selection. That is only the Rhino head. So now what, I, what I'm trying to do is separate the Rhino head from the Rhino body because I don't care about the Rhino body. I just want the head. So I'm going to click Y, and that's, that separates shells. Just kidding. It separates bodies. So I click Y, and now I have this two, I, now I have three parts, right? I've got Rhino, which is just the Rhino body. So I'm going to rename it to Rhino body. And then now I've got the Rhino head. Whenever you're dealing with multiple STLs or multiple files in the same same uh, sort of mesh mix suite, it's it's pretty it's good practice to sort of name them. I found okay great. So now we have the Rhino head. Now we've got the pug body. Let's highlight them. Cool 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 cool. Okay so pug body is currently it has a pug head. We don't want that. We want it to have a Rhino head. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do a, we could have done the same thing with the pug head, but I'm gonna use a slightly different tool. Back to the selection tool. Excuse me. You'll notice that the selection tool is able to select on the body, and that's all fine. And, excuse me, all fine and dandy. But also, if you select outside of the body, so you'll notice my cursor is here. I'm still in the selection tool over here. If I drag here, there's a red line. Ooh, spooky. If I drag here, there's a red line, and I can sort of select. I can sort of highlight the region of the body that I'm interested in. And then the selection tool will highlight it. I think if I go in the opposite direction, nope. Okay, so I guess it, I think it just chooses chooses the smallest area of the body. So if I go like here, yeah, I think it just chooses the smallest area. And the least, the less general you are, the the less you can sort of select, right? So I can uh, it's just sort of toy around with it. I'm not really trying to explain it very well, but basically it's a very useful tool, and you can sort of drag and select large swaths of the of the pug in this case. Great. Okay. So now I'm sort of cleaning up that selection. I'm remembering that the, ooh, not the rhino body, the rhino head. I'm sort of had the intention of moving the head down with respect to the pug. You know, let's just do that for clarity. So I'm going to move the pug up a little bit. And now you can sort of see where the rhino head is going to fit. You see that little, um, I'm going to use the C tool in order to recenter it. You see that little uh, blue at the top? That's actually from the rhino head. So that's a good way to sort of uh, index where the rhino is with respect to the pug. So I sort of want all of these different things on the on the pug to disappear. Now here's something cool that you can do. So you'll see that I have both the pug and the rhino selected, sorry, displayed. But if I go like this, I'm only actually affecting the pug. And so that way I can use the rhino as like a stencil when I'm sort of selecting the areas of the pug that I don't want. And that way I don't over select or under select. And then once I'm ready, I can sort of make the rhino disappear and I get to keep my selection. So that's very nice. Great. Okay, so I like the selection. I want to smooth it up a little bit. Great. Preserve shape, iterations. Cool. All right. That worked really well. So now I have this pug face, and what am I going to use? I'm going to use the separate uh, bodies tool, or Y. So now I have the pug head. So that's pug head. And this is pug body. So for the rest of this, I won't actually be using the rhino body. So I'm just going to delete it or the pug head. So I'm just going to delete that. And now we're only left with the two things that we want. Great. OK, so let's make them both vis visible. You'll notice that because of the way that I scaled it, they sort of align quite well. I'm going to give them a little bit of distance. Or actually, I'm going to sort of angle up the rhino head. Yeah. Oh, man, that's going to be great. OK, so you'll notice. Obviously, there's a pretty big gap between them. That's not great. And also, not only that, but they're two different files. So the way we tackle that is, firstly, we align the body and the head with respect to each other in the way that we want them to be combined. So I'm happy with this, right? I think it looks great. I'm going to use a V to sort of home it. You know, I'm, I'm pretty happy. No wireframe. Looks pretty cool. We're gonna, we're, and anything we do, we're going we're gonna to smooth out later. So it's not a big deal. Oh, I love those wrinkles. OK, fantastic. So. First things first is we want to combine these files. The way you do that, let me let me slow down for you for a second. Okay. So you need to select, have them both selected at the same time. So the way you can do that is you can hold down the shift key and then sort of click on both of them. You can do that here, by either by clicking the files or by clicking in the object browser. As you do that, you'll notice, just keep your eye right over here, you'll notice that this object, um, 
this menu pops up. So we want to do a combine. So now is one part. Before we had two, and now it's one. So we're going to call this Rhino Pug. Fantastic. You'll notice that this is a different face group. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to leave it. Well, for clarity, I'm just going to remove the face group. So Control A, Control Shift G, and now it's all one face group. Okay. This is one of the coolest tools in Mesh Mixer that we're about to use, other than the center tool, which is the best. Um, the This is called, I don't know what its name is, but I call it Select the Edge. If you, in Mesh Mixer, find the edge of a, of a mesh, and then you double click on a triangle that, bond, that is bound, bounded by the edge of the mesh, for example, this one, and you double click it, it'll highlight the entire boundary. How wonderful is that? Look at that, all the way around, pretty smoothly too. Now let's say you mess up and you get really, really close and you highlight part of the mesh that isn't bounded at the boundary. What you end up doing is you select the entire mesh, right? The entire contiguous mesh. That's true if I select it over here. Let's make it bigger so you can see it better. What? Oh, sorry, let's make it bigger so you can see it better, right? So I could select the entire thing over here, or if I'm sort of lazy, I can sort of double click over here. Oh, that was actually really efficient. So in this case, I've actually selected both edges of both meshes, or rather each edge of both mesh meshes, which in our application is actually fine. So we're just gonna run with that. But uh, so now what we wanna do is use the join tool. Now the join tool only works if meshes are sort of close together and are roughly the same size. but and if it doesn't work, it'll just say, you know, fail. Uh, and then you just sort of realign them until they work. But in this case, I know it's going to work. So I'm going to say join. And then it gives you no options. It just says, here's me joining it. Do you like it? And I say, I do like it. Thank you so much, Mesh Mixer. You're a wonderful software. And I'm so excited to use you. Or at least I do. Um, if you want to get back to the brush menu, I just forgot there's a hotkey. It's two. Uh, and now by default, we're on the best tool. Sorry, I guess all the tools are my favorite tool. I just realized that. Let's say the second best tool, uh, Robust Smooth. So now we're going to scale down. Uh-oh, let's change some of our settings in Robust Smooth and Refinement. We want to increase our refinement, decrease our reduce. Great. Okay, so now it's a much more, it's a much less aggressive tool. And we're just sort of going through smoothing out this interface until it looks a little bit more natural. I actually did a phenomenal job, so there's very little for us to do. I can't even really tell where the interface was. Jeez, that's pretty neat. Okay, great. So now we have this horrible, horrible, ooh, there it is. Yep, okay, so let's sort of go through. That's, a, that's another good pointer, is that whenever you're not sure if something looks right, remove the wireframe, because sometimes it's, it's overwhelming to you and you can't really tell if things look good or not. And that's, uh, that's how you make a, a, a rhino pug. Oh, yeah, no, before we do, before we finish, if you want to see how big your Rhino Pug is, you can use the U button. That sort of shows you a, a box that tells you how big it is. So it gives you the numbers here, but also correspondingly here. And this is all in millimeters. So now we have this Rhino Pug. We want to export it. Say so export. I'm going to export it to my desktop. I'm going to call it Rhino Pug. I say save. Um, and then let's say I go to my desktop and here it is as an STL all ready to print. Great.